Hello and welcome to Poison in Your Pasture, Your Horse versus Toxic Plants, Symptoms, Treatment, and Better Yet Prevention. I'm Dr. Jennifer Nato, and I'm glad you could join me here today. Um, thanks everyone for the great turnout. So today we are going to talk about toxic plants, as you might imagine. And first of all, we're going to start with a history of plant poisoning. And um, in general, most toxic plants um, really aren't that toxic, um, but oleander and you are really pretty toxic. Um, some toxic plants commonly found in our region is another thing that we're going to discuss, and we're going to discuss preventing poisoning by toxic plants, and then we'll take any questions that you all may have. So uh, the first start of plant poisoning um, was white snake root. Humans um, drank tainted milk that was tainted with white snake root that cows had consumed and they became very ill. And that was one of the first cases of plant poisoning in the United States. Another one was death camus. Um, this is called zagazine poisoning. And this was reported as early as the 19th century. Um, actually, uh, the indigenous peoples sold the death camus as food to railroad workers and they died after eating the bulbs, which were very toxic. I don't know if you remember in My Friend Flicka, but in My Friend Flicka, a horse consumes loco weed, and that is the most widespread poisonous plant problem found in the Western United States. Um, they've actually lost more than $300 million in annual income due to uh, deaths of poison livestock. So loco weed can be a very serious problem there um, where there is a toxicity um, in loco weed. And then we have swan sonine, which is... Um, found in like things like our noxious weeds from seed grains. Um, so uh, we can, oh, actually, sorry, the swansonine is in loco weed. That's the poison. It causes weight loss and neurological disorders or erratic behavior in the animals. And another problem arose when people consume noxious weeds from seed grains originating, originating in Europe and Asia. So that was another um, part of our history of plant poisoning. The next plant that we come to, um, the first plant that we come to is oleander, and you can see its scientific name up there. It's primarily used as an ornamental, but one thing that's important to note is that the lethal dose of this is 0.005% of a horse's body weight. So in a thousand pound horse, if they consume five pounds of oleander, that will kill them. Um, so even a couple of mouthfuls can actually create... Um, issues for them. And the toxins present are oleandrin and neurine. neurine. And um, these are cardiac glycosides that cause damage to the heart. And we have many um, red flowered varieties, for example, that can, um, they are actually the more toxic of this oleander. And then we have our symptoms. So you can see here, um, hemorrhagic enteritis is one that's an inflammation um, that results in bleeding. In the horse, um, colic or a, abdominal pain. Um, colic is really any type of abdominal pain and diarrhea. So rarely the horse will also have rapid breathing, cold extremities, and a rapid, weak, irregular pulse. So the treatment for this is activated charcoal. We use charcoal in many horses to treat them for toxicities. Charcoal helps to absorb toxins. So we'll give it at two point two to five grams per kilogram of body weight of the horse. The next plant that we have that is also very toxic is yew. Again, even a couple of mouthfuls can result in um, issues for the horse. Again, this is an ornamental. So one thing that we need to think about is not using these ornamental plants that are poisonous to horses around horses. Um, and 0.1 to 0.5% of the body weight is the lethal dose. So a little less lethal than oleander, but not by much. Um, the horse has to consume 10 to 50 pounds of yew to die um, from it. And the toxin present is taxine and toxic alkaloids um, result. So usually if the horse is fed a balanced diet, it will not consume you. Um, but if it is the only green thing around, we might see it do that. So this will result in muscle trembling, in coordination, nervousness, difficulty in breathing, a slow heart rate, diarrhea, and vomiting. In the, well, the horse can't vomit, so it will have some other issues. Uh, people would vomit if they ate you and convulsions and death. 
And the treatment again is activated charcoal. So this is two to five grams again per kilogram body weight um, to help absorb it. We'll also give atropine sulfate um, that will help increase our heart rate that has um, slowed down there. And also IV fluid and provide supportive measures and keep the horse quiet. Um, a common poisonous plant that we would see around here is milkweed. Um, it is really good for the monarch butterflies, but it does cause um, problems for horses if they consume enough of it. But again, the enough is the key. It does grow in open areas along roadsides and in fields. And the poisonous dose, this is just poisonous, not toxic, is 0.05 to 2% of the body weight, depending on the variety of milkweed. So that's 5 to 20 pounds to produce any sort of toxicity. And the toxin are various um, cardenolides, and cardiac glycosides are also the toxin that is found. Um, so the symptoms would be dyspnea, where they're having issues breathing, they have irregular breathing, colic, diarrhea, muscle tremors, seizures, head pressing, or the horse could just be found dead. The treatment again is activated charcoal, same dosage. Next we have rhododendron, um, and azalea is also in this family. Um, so these are ornamental, um, and they can sometimes be found in the woods as well. We have them blooming about right now. Uh, azalea is actually a subgenus of this. Um, horses are rarely affected by it. It is 0.2% of their body weight for a um, uh, poisonous dose, not a lethal dose. So that is about uh, two pounds of rhododendron that they'd have to consume. And the toxin is grania toxins. And most poisoning of rhododendron would occur in the winter. That's usually because that's the only green thing around, which might cause the horse to want to eat those leaves. So the symptoms would be anorexia, where the horse goes off its feed. It salivates excessively. Bradycardia has a slow heart rate. Cardiac arrhythmia doesn't um, function normally and weakness and paralysis coma in the horse. So again, treatment is supportive therapy. Um, we're going to give the active charcoal again, magnesium sulfate, oral and IV fluids. And if the bradycardia is severe, we'll give atropine to help speed that up. Next is mountain laurel. Again, it's found in the woods. It's actually the Connecticut flower. Um, and the lethal dose is 1.2 to 1.6% of body weight. That data comes only from sheep. Um, so that's 12 to 16 pounds in order to create a um, dose that would kill a horse. Um, and, but the data is only for sheep, so we don't really know what the lethal dose would be in the horse. Um, this is a graniotoxin. Horses, again, are rarely affected by mountain laurel, so if your horse snatches a bite of mountain laurel, you probably shouldn't panic at all. It causes excessive green, frothy salivation, um, colic, frequent def defecation, depression, weakness, ataxia, where they're incoordinated, and um, we can give them mineral oil to help pass that out, and we use IV fluid therapy. The next one is wild onion. Um, we find this in moist meadows and on hillsides, but the poisonous dose is a diet greater than 25% dry matter of onions. So I feel like that's probably not gonna be likely that your horse is gonna consume that much. The toxin is N-propyl um, disulfide. Um, again, horses are rarely affected from onion, um, but hemoglobinuria will be a problem. That's where um, they have hemoglobin in their urine, um, pale mucous membranes, um, and hemoglobin is what helps carry oxygen. A fast, weak pulse, staggering, collapse, the odor of onion on their breath in their urine and feces, and they'll be slightly anemic. The treatment, again, um, is really just no stress. Um, there may be a need for a whole blood transfusion since the hemoglobin has been um, passing out of them. Next, we have red maple poisoning, which you may have heard of, um, caused by Acer rubrum. Again, um, may red maple is considered an ornamental. They're also found in the woods. A fatal dose is three kilograms in ponies over one to five days, so three kilograms of leaves consumed. Um, a poisonous dose is 1.5 kilograms. Um, a toxin in it is gallic acid. It's an oxidant, and there's a hemolytic toxin that they still haven't quite identified. The symptoms will be an acute hemolytic anemia, so what will happen is the red blood cells will lyse or break apart, um, resulting in a lack of oxygen to the horse. So it'll be weak. It'll have increased respiration because it's not getting enough oxygen, increased heart rate, um, cyanosis where it'll turn kind of yellow, icterus, um, and a red-brown color of the urine as well as abortion. So um, the treatment is really blood transfusions and IV fluids as well as large doses of vitamin C. Um, and so we will do that. So this is another problem that we'll see red maple poisoning.
Next, we have bracken fern. Um, sometimes a horse will snatch a bite of this on a trail ride. This is found in the moist open woods. Um, but they have to consume a diet of 3 to 5% bracken fern for at least 30 days before clinical signs appear. So it's probably unlikely that that's going to happen. The toxin in it is thiaminase. Uh, thiaminase ties up the B vitamin thiamine. And um, the symptoms would be a refusal to eat. The horse will lose weight. It'll be depressed. It'll have muscle tremors. An incoordinated gait, especially in the hind legs. Um, paralysis, uh, colic, constipation, hemoglobinuria, again, a hemoglobin in the urine, a severe anemia, elevated temperature, and a rapid heart rate. The treatment is to give the horse IV thiamine and repeat um, a dose IM for several days. Next one we have is buckeye or horse chestnut, which I don't think I could recognize if it smacked me in the face, but um, it's caused severe poisoning in cattle fed as little as 0.5% of their body weight, which is five pounds in a cow. Um, and the, it, the toxins are the glycosides asculin and fraxin. And symptoms found would be abdominal pain, gastroenteritis or inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract, muscle twitching, weakness, a hopping gait, especially on the hind legs, recumbency where they lay down, have trouble getting up, muscle spasms, hyperglycemia, um, high level of glucose in the blood, and glycosuria where there's a glucose in the urine, proteinuria where there's protein in the urine, and a coma. So the treatment would be a laxative to help pass this out and IV fluid with calcium gluconate and dextrose to help uh, replace that glucose that's being lost. Next, we have oak. Um, that's the tree of Connecticut uh, found in moist woods to dry mountains. The leaf and flower buds and the green acorns are most toxic in the springtime, but they have to consume a diet of over half oak buds or acorns for several days for toxicity to occur. And the red and black oak is more toxic than the white oak. And the toxin is called gallotannin. So the horse will stop eating. It'll be depressed. It'll have intestinal stasis where nothing is moving in there. Excessive thirst, frequent urination, hard and dark feces, then black tarry diarrhea, teeth grinding, a hunchback, red colored urine, dehydration, icterus, and the treatment will be IV fluids. Next, we have black walnut, which is found in sawdust. It's also found in bedding with as little as 5 to 20% of black walnut shavings. That can result in laminitis in the horse. Um, so the toxin is juglone. So you really want to make sure you know what type of wood you're getting when you're getting shavings. You want to make sure that there is no question that you're, you might be getting black walnut. The symptom in the horse is depression. Um, they'll have edema of their lower legs. They'll have lameness, colic, and respiratory distress. Um, so the symptom is really just to remove them from the shavings, the treatment. Then we have horse nettle and bull nettle, which is a perennial found along roads and field edges. It's often found in hay and the toxin is called solanine and the effects are similar to those of atropine in that it's going to cause tachycardia or speeding up of the heart rate, dilation of pupils. Other things that will happen are hallucination, salivation, intense thirst. Um, intestinal stasis, where again, things stop, decrease food consumption, poor growth rates, muscle tremors, disturbances in locomotion, rapid respiration, decreased water consumption, and they'll be especially sensitive to the touch. No listed treatment um, was available for horse nettle. Um, prevention is really the best cure in these cases. So you want to make sure that you have plenty of um, forage and roughage available for your horse, or perhaps use one of those um, little... Uh, ways that they have to keep the horse consuming hay by putting like a, a grid over top of it or having like a hay net with really small openings. Um, those are ways to let the horse graze more during the day but not eat vast quantities of roughage but to keep them occupied. Um, so that definitely plays a role. Horses also have individual peculiarities. Sometimes they just have an affinity for red maple leaves for whatever reason. Um, and then we also have to note that there are seasonally toxic plants so we have to be aware of those. Also ornamentals, when we're designing our barn and the areas around our barn, any place that a horse has access, we want to keep away those um, ornamentals that could cause issues like you and Oleander. When in doubt, we want to avoid contact with that plant for the horse and we want to watch out. Again, they usually have to consume a great deal for it to have a, a, like an effect on them. And we want to avoid boredom. This horse looks a little bored right here. We want to make sure we don't have some situation like that because that could lead to the horse trying to ingest something toxic. So these are some great um, books on plant poisoning. Um, 
which you would really um, and get a kick out of and enjoy um, looking at probably. Um, and if you have any questions, I will take them at this time. Thanks for being with us today. I see a question coming through on the chat right now. Okay, what is icterus? Icterus is a technical term for jaundice. Thanks for that great question. Does anyone else have any questions? Seeing none on the chat, I'll thank you for being with us today and remind you to check out our websites and tell your friends. Thanks and take care. Keep on horsing around.